Hey, Chris here. I'm back. Sorry if you uh, got that last bit and I had a little interruption. Anyway, what I was saying is that when I was telling you my story about how I achieved my freedom, how I, how I left the nine to five and started living the digital nomad lifestyle, I was, I had mentioned that the first thing I did was I did a, a freelance business doing, uh, creating spreadsheets and, and databases, which is kind of what I was doing for my, my full-time job before that, which is kind of, you know, that's kind of the natural thing to, to do when you're freelancing is just do what you're already good at, do what you're already doing, etc. cetera. Um, but I found it a little bit difficult to, uh, to get clients doing that. It was hard to get enough clients to be able to fund my lifestyle to the point that I really wanted. So um, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. The, uh, for me, doing, uh, creating spreadsheets, and especially these kind of fancy spreadsheets with programming in the back end, it was kind of a, kind of a, a niche, obscure, techie kind of thing that, frankly, a lot of people don't really understand. And I think that was a big part of the reason it was kind of hard to get clients, is that clients had to realize that it was something that they wanted before they were going to pay me for it. And most of the, most of the clients, you know, they could have benefited from this. It was very hard to, to um, tell them, to communicate to them that this would be useful because they didn't already need, know that they needed it. Um, and then also it's, it's something, something like that is kind of a complicated um, thing to freelance in. So it's kind of hard to communicate that, that you are any better than anyone else. So I, um, you know, when I, I started out, I was trying to get jobs on on sites like Upwork, sites freelancing websites, and those are, are hard to do, especially for something um, something like programming, because there's a million, mostly Indian people who will charge a quarter of what I'm charging, and um, most of them probably don't know what they're doing. Maybe some of them do. I don't know. I've hired them before, and and. They will. <laughs> they kind of have a tendency of saying anything to to get themselves hired, and then once they get hired, they have no idea what they're doing. But anyway, it's hard to compete when one you're starting out on that website. You know, you may have 20 years of experience, but on that website, you don't have any reviews, so you're kind of you're kind of a nobody. And then, um, and then it's hard to uh, it's hard to, to demonstrate that you're any better than anyone else. So um, I'm thinking. If I was to do it again, if I was to try doing the freelancing thing, which is not my not my uh, my route at the moment, but if I was going to do it, I was thinking about this. I would start with something very simple. I gave you the other day. I gave you the example of Canva. There's a site called Canva. It's Canva.com or just uh, C A N V A. It's an app on the phone too, where you can put together really nice looking social media pictures, banners, logos, that kind of thing, with very little uh, technical knowledge. You just kind of drag and drop things. Well, a lot of entrepreneurs don't know this exists. And uh, even if they did know this exists, they probably wouldn't really want to take the time and effort into learning it. But everyone knows that they need graphic design. They want nice looking stuff to put on their website, on their social media, etc. So this is something where you could, you could take a job um, creating a, a logo or a banner or something and uh, charge $100 and, I don't know, probably get it done in 10 minutes, right? So that's something you can teach yourself to do, even if you don't already know how to do. And I think that's a much better route to go when you're freelancing because, it's one, it's real easy to demonstrate your competence because you can just show some other graphics that you've created before. And then, um, you know, if you have to do a few really low price jobs to get a reputation, that's fine too, because each job takes you maybe 10 minutes. And then um, I, I think you can charge, you can upcharge quite a bit from what you're actually charging. And then uh, if you, I mean, if you do this and you're only doing Upwork and Fiverr and those kind of freelancing sites, you're probably still going to be just scraping by for a living. You're probably not going to be making real money. So you're probably going to make much better profits if you can get off of the freelancing sites and prospect for your own clients. Find like local businesses, um, run ads if you have to, make a website, write some blog posts. Um, write, you can write blog posts on LinkedIn. I've, I've had a lot of success with that. And telling people, 
just uh, about how to how to hire a, a graphic designer, for example. And then you can get uh, considerably better prices because you're positioning yourself as an expert and you don't have a whole bunch of people that are that are trying to undercut you on this freelance websites. And then once you do that, if you can get some get some customers to uh, to sign up for your service when you're doing this and you're not not doing it on the freelancing sites, but you're getting your own customers, then you can actually scale the business. So say, uh, I mean, say you get you're getting jobs for for hundred dollars for two hundred dollars to design these banners, and then you can go onto the same freelancing sites. You can go on Fiverr.com or Upworking Upwork.com, and you can hire people that'll for for next to nothing that will uh, that'll that'll make these designs for you. So you. Take a hundred dollars cash from the from the um, client. You pay out like I don't know ten dollars, twenty dollars to someone else to do all the work, and then they send you the the finished product. You send it to the client, and then everybody's happy. The uh, the the freelancers made twenty dollars. You've made eighty dollars, and you haven't really done much work except be the go between between the two. And then of course once you get uh, once you you do that a bunch, you get a feel for which freelancers are good because. There's a lot of freelancers that really aren't very good. So the, the more you do it, the smoother it'll get. You get a kind of a Rolodex of people that are that you know are good, you've worked with in the past, you know that they're good freelancers. And so it takes some of the guesswork out of it. Anyway, that's it for today. Just some ideas for you. If you want to get into freelancing, that's how I would do it.